everyone, it's Missy here from The Joy of It All. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I have a little bit of a bonus video for you because I'm happy to announce that I've been invited to join the Polka Doodles um, design team. So they are mostly digital based. They do have some kind of 3D products that you can pick up like stamp sets, papers, etc. But I'm so excited. So we're gonna do three, um, three months and then we both get to decide if it's a good fit. So there are challenges and we will talk more about that as we move along and I'll try to talk more about it in the voiceover. But I am joining the Halloween challenge this time um, and then going forward you will see me make Christmas cards or holiday cards because that's the season that I'm in. Um, with a lot of their images and it's going to be so much fun and I'm so excited So a big thank you to Nikki and the polka doodles team for allowing me this opportunity. I'm so stinking excited. I love this card <laughs> I love this card if you guys know me, you know I don't really do fall on Halloween because the Wednesday after Labor Day We normally start the holiday card series and then it's full-on holiday cards cards for like four months three months four months three months so I'm sneaking one in and I love this card so very much. It's so cute if I do say so myself. So yeah, so make sure you leave a comment down below and I will have all of Polka Doodle's um, information in the description box. So make sure you're following them on Instagram. Um, they've got blog, they've got uh, groups, they have all sorts of things. They've been around for a long time. They're based in the UK, but I believe you guys have seen me use their images, and if you haven't, I own a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I already own a bunch. So yeah, so anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, give the video a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram, I'm at the Jolly Fed Elf, and leave me a comment saying hi, um, and let me know if you've ever heard of Polka Doodles, because they have paper, digital paper, digital stamps, they offer bundles, they're, they offer sales, like it's a really fun, um, website and there's so much product to choose for choose from so yeah so okay let's head over to the craft table and I'll walk you through this fun little bonus Halloween card hey friends so I have print and cut all of my pieces I will do a detailed video on how I do that coming soon so be on the lookout for that um, I've mentioned before that you can use digitals in Silhouette software without having to cut them out with the Silhouette. So that will be coming, I promise. Just give me, I'm going to make another card, of course, using digital images at some point, And I will share with you an in-depth tutorial. Okay, so since these were print and cut, meaning I printed them on the computer, then I used a cutting machine to cut them. They were printed onto white paper, which means they have a white core. So I am taking corresponding markers and going all the way around. So for the sentiment and for the biggest star, those were both have a turquoise border. So I ran around it with a turquoise marker. For the, I believe that's an argyle star, I went around it with a black marker. And here I'm getting ready to create my layers. So when you're working with digital images, I always say I never have a plan going in. When you're working with digital images, you kind of sort of have to have a plan. So I was playing around with this in Silhouette software and came up kind of with this card layer. Now, once I got it printed, I'm like, ooh, I really love that paper, but I want to bring in a third pattern. So if you haven't heard my little spiel <laughs> about patterns and grouping patterns, you want the rule of three. So you want one that's going to be either your largest or busiest. And for me, that's this stripe. You want one that's kind of in the middle. So it has a pattern, but it's not necessarily, you know, very busy or the pattern repeats like these potion bottles. And then the last one, you want either a small pattern or a pattern that's kind of tone on tone. And for me, that is the um, argyle. Now there's a little pattern to the bigger star, that turquoise paper, but it's a crosshatch and it's basically, it looks like, you know, a solid color on the paper. So I normally don't assemble the card first, but we're doing it a little backwards. So I brought in, I believe this is Caribbean teal from MFT. Um, it's one of their darker teal cardstocks. And then I have used, I want to say it's the A2 cover dies from Stamp Anything. Those are my most used dies, I swear. It comes with a stitch die that will fit 
um, that will cut out a piece of paper to fit the entire card front. It comes out with this stitch kind of scallop one. It comes out with a smaller rectangle. Like they are some of my most used dies. I absolutely love them. So I added the um, three parts flat. So the stripe paper, the potion paper, and then this original star are down flat. And I'm going to add just a little bit of dimension for this star. Now, I'm going to be adding an actual wobble in the end. So you don't want this to be popped up super high. But the good thing about action wobbles is they will fold down completely flat when you put it in an envelope. So it's not like <clears throat> it's not like a shaker card or something like that where there's no give. There is give when you use an action wobble. So for the cute little beard, I am using my favorite red combo. I believe it's E19. E09, E08, and possibly E07. I had all of this written down, but I have since lost that piece of paper. I'm pretty sure it just went in recycling and now it's gone. It's gone forever. <laughs> so yeah, so when I color hair or when I color a beard like this, I start with my darkest color and then kind of flick my way to the center. So I start darkest, then my medium, darkest and medium and then I go in the middle with white. Now I am not someone who likes a very strong white highlight in any kind of hair so you're not going to see me do that very often or if at all. On this beard I do leave a little bit of white space but I go in it with a very kind of light um, this kind of light ready brown but left some hair strokes in it. It's kind of hard sometimes to add dimension um, I honestly feel I want to get a set of original markers to go with all the ones I normally use for hair because it has that finer nib, that kind of hard nib. And I will say that was the one thing I did like about the Spectrum Noir markers was that nib, that really fine nib. And I wish I could put one on the other end of these uh, markers because I rarely use the brush, like not brush, um, whatever that nib is at the bottom. <laughs> What is that nib called? It's not the brush. It's the other one. Anyway, so yeah, sorry. Brain fart. For his little nose and his little hands, I used E35 and 33. Um, just very light shading there. And then for his hat and for his robes, I'm using some BG colors. I believe this is BG49, 23, and 30. 13 or 15 and I'm not sure but um yeah any of the turquoises will do and again you can color complete without using Copics there are so many other coloring mediums out there um you could do it with crayons I've shown before that you can color with crayons as long as you have a little bit of baby oil you can kind of blend them out colored pencils um, I always, always, always recommend starting with something less expensive to see if you even like to color because you may not like to color. A lot of people don't. And the good thing about polka doodles is you can buy the line art, but they also offer colored images and colored backgrounds. So if you're not someone who likes to color, this image comes pre-colored. And you can just print it out, cut it out with your scissors, cut it out with machine if you have one. And you can still use these really cute um, colored images on cards without having to go through all of the coloring. There are some times where I can't color, like I can't hold when my RA is acting up, I can't hold a marker very well. So those are the days you'll see me do something that involves like maybe just die cutting. There'll be a couple of cards coming soon where you see me just die cutting because I had a day where I wanted to craft, but my my body just didn't, my body said, no, we're not doing that today. <laughs> so if you are disabled as I am, there are ways to get around it. Um, you just have to do what you can do and just be okay with that. And that's hard sometimes for me because I see other people creating out the wazoo and I'm like, Misty, you just can't do that. And that's okay. So anyway, that was a little tangent, but I don't want you to feel like you can't create with an image like this because you don't like to color. And like I said, Polka Doodles is one that offers the line art, but they also offered colored images. And I want to say they do that on every image they release. So, yeah. Yeah. 
So I colored the the pur the witchy shoes purple, and then I colored the lollipop pink. And once I've done this, I'm gonna bring in some gel pen to add a little bit of glitter. I'm gonna bring in a pink to go around the um the line that's in the lollipop. I'm gonna use this green to go over the green in the socks. I'm gonna use purple. I'm gonna use black, and then I'm gonna use orange. So. This is my new favorite way to add dimension and glitter gel pens are super cheap. You can get them on AliExpress. You can get them on, um, you could get them on, uh, Amazon as well. If you are not patient, <laughs> if you're not patient, you can get them there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love this cute little pumpkin. It's so cute and I love it with the gel pen. So much fun. So I always have a piece of paper where I am testing markers or I'm testing whatever pen that I'm going to use. Um, it's just I keep extra paper that I've either messed up on or, you know, just have it to the side so I can use it. I'm bringing in a white paint pen. This is not a Posca. I need to probably pick up a Posca. But for when I go outside the lines, I like to bring in a white pen or a white gel pen to kind of fix my mistakes. And this is the easiest way to do that for sure. And you can see here, I have a little tiny detail brush and I'm picking up the paint because this is not a fine tip paint, paint pen. I find this does a better job than the uh, white gel pen does just because it kind of makes the, the gel pen can kind of dry and still have the color behind it. So like this would have dried to a very light pink rather than drying to a flat opaque white. And I prefer the flat opaque white. And I did add a couple of other spots on his nose and on his rope. So I'm going to bring in a big action wobble and we're going to get that adhered to the back. I don't know where you can get action wobbles. You guys remember a few years back I was on the action wobbles design team and I have probably, I had a hundred or so. I've used most of them since then. So I'm not really sure where you can get these. I know someone had said someone else was um, distributing them. So you may have to look on Amazon or if you're someone who is in the know, let us know in the comments down below. Once I add a little bit of adhesive to that, that's going to be it, y'all. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you. Don't forget to check out Poco Doodles. All of their information is linked down below. I have a link to all of the supplies I used in this card. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment letting me know what you think of this card and saying hi. Be sure to check out the Etsy shop. This may still be there. I'm not quite sure. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this bonus video. I hope you have a good day, night, weekend, wherever you are. And I'll see you tomorrow for another day in my 2023 holiday card series. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.